Hey Cherubs, it's Matt. As you may recall from my last video, Alzheimer's disease is characterized by plaques and tangles, so the definitive way to diagnose the disease is brain biopsy. Okay, I think that's the police outside, so we'll resume this lecture as soon as I get my medical license restored. Alzheimer's disease is diagnosed clinically. The symptom that you think of first and foremost is probably memory loss, but Alzheimer's disease is a lot more than that, so let's back up for a bit. Alzheimer's is part of a group of illnesses in the DSM-5 called neurocognitive disorders. These are acquired illnesses that represent a decline of cognition, so we're not talking about developmental disorders. Broadly speaking, there are mild and major neurocognitive disorders. Mild neurocognitive disorder, formerly known as mild cognitive impairment, is characterized by memory loss that doesn't interfere with one's functional status and independence. Grandpa forgets where he leaves his keys, but he can still drive and take care of himself, no problem. A quick digression. Some of you may say, well, isn't being forgetful just part of getting old? Why does that need a name? Well, forgetfulness isn't uncommon, but we don't say that it's normal. It's kind of like hypertension, obesity, or grown men watching children's cartoons. These aren't uncommon, but they're not normal. Whoa, wait, I'm missing my show. Mom, tell Rachel to give me the remote. Major neurocognitive disorders are characterized by memory and functional status loss. Now, if we're talking about degenerative disorders that mostly involve the elderly, DSM-4 would call those dementias. And that's what I'm gonna be doing because <gasps> look at how many syllables. Alzheimer's is the most common dementia, and accounts for about 60-80% to 80 of cases. It's characterized by a gradual, insidious loss of memory involving more than one cognitive domain, and a loss of functional status. Typically, we're looking for a story that sounds like Alzheimer's. I think we started noticing that Grandma had memory problems, uh, about a year or two ago? Rachel, when did Mom kick me out of her place? At first she was just losing her keys, but then she started accusing me of stealing stuff. She used to drive, but then she got lost on the way home from the grocery store and got into an accident. Lately, she's been calling me her brother's name, and I'm like, what, only half her age? Rachel, how old am I? She used to be an amazing cook. Oh, she made the best desserts, but now she just makes yogurt. It's okay, but it's weird because she keeps it in milk cartons. The differential diagnosis for Alzheimer's includes other causes of memory loss, which are many. Delirium is characterized by an acute waxing and waning of mental status and inattention. Grandma goes to the hospital and BOOM she turns into a banshee. Depression can manifest itself with symptoms of forgetfulness and a loss of activities. Of note, depressed patients often remember that they're forgetful, whereas demented patients frequently have no insight into their problems. What? Why are you looking at me? And of course, the differential also includes other dementias. Lewy body dementia is characterized by memory loss and subsequent Parkinsonian features. Vascular dementia is characterized by memory loss after a stroke. We run tests on patients with suspected Alzheimer's disease, but these are generally either nonspecific or they're for ruling out other illnesses. We typically perform screening mental status testing, more on that later, and depression screening. Labs typically include a TSH and a vitamin B12 level. You can throw in anything else you want if you're ruling out delirium. You should probably check for HIV and syphilis for the appropriate patients. Imaging is nice to have if you can get it, but insurance doesn't routinely cover it. Advanced Alzheimer's is generally categorized by diffuse loss in brain volume. Identification of strokes may indicate vascular dementia or mixed dementia. Normal pressure hydrocephalus is a nice catch, but sometimes even with tests it can be hard to say what a patient has. Patients with a bunch of little strokes over a long period of time may present just like Alzheimer's disease. Sometimes dementias can be mixed or multifactorial. At the beginning of this video, I alluded to the fact that unfortunately there's no easy test for Alzheimer's. Wait, what? No, I am saying that there is no test. If there were a test, I'd know about it. I'd be using it all the time at my job. Wait, what do you mean I tested positive? No, I don't have dementia. I teach students about dementia. Wait, what is this? What's going on here? No, Rachel, tell them! Of course, that's Rachel, my sister! Rachel!